camera is on. Welcome to Nights at the Round Table, a round table discussion on speculative fiction books and film. Hey everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Nights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the 2015 sci-fi film Ex Machina. I'm sitting here with Carol and with Sue. Okay. <laughs> I had to think about that, Sue, sorry. Okay. Sue. <laughs> well, I mean, her name is really complicated. Well, no, it's yes. just because I'm so used to referring Jaggy. to her as Jaggy. From, oh, like, yeah. T- Twitch streams, etc. Um, I'd like to start with general impressions, Carol. Why me? Because you. <laughs> I didn't like this movie. It wow. left a bad taste in my mouth for many, many reasons, which we'll no doubt get into. <laughs> okay. okay. This is going to be a fun panel then. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was very thought provoking. Um, it showed what you can do with a very small amount of cast members and, you know, only a couple of sets to deal with. Um, and it. it has had me thinking about things for the last three days since I watched it, so that's a good thing. (laughs) I'm kind of in the middle. There's a lot about this movie that left a bad taste in my mouth, but I think it was supposed to. But, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I think think maybe it tried to, to, to leave you that, but it fell really, really short. Of like, you know, like, it tried to... Okay. Well, I'm I'm getting way too deep. <laughs> no, 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 go, go, go for it. Okay, so, so you have this movie where the only real people are two white guys, and 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 all the women and people of color are literal objects, and and okay, so obviously spoilers. At the end, you do have this sort of revenge thing that happens with the robot, but also like the flesh stripping and cannibalizing of a like woman of color to achieve that. Holy shit! Did I have problems with that movie? Yeah, that's that's very interesting. I know that um, a couple of things that just sort of stuck out for me was obviously the rich white guy is going to have a sexual attraction to the Asian robot. You mean to the like, army of fleshbots that he made <laughs> for his penis? Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it was uh, a very interesting way to look at it because he single-handedly chose Caleb to be there um, and to see what would happen and so he had to model the robot to be something that Caleb would be interested in which is why there was that line of oh so you made her look like the type that I follow for my porn profile yeah Yeah. you know and so that kind of was an interesting thought process Um, but it was more the concept of the Turing test like the the whole purpose of going there and why did you win this contest yeah okay um, but if if he's making like he's basically you saw it like he has in his closet like you know a half yes. dozen other like fail experiments or whatever yes. if the true test of an ai is just to converse why start with the body this isn't like this isn't uh, an inventor trying to like make a perfect human being mm-hmm. this this is a guy who's making a sex doll who's like falling in love with it and and is so demented that he has to bring someone else into his insanity to justify his feelings. Yeah, yes. it's um, but at the same time, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I can totally see not. a rich white guy doing this shit. I have like, no doubt that this has already happened. <laughs> oh, well, there are sex bots already out These there. These sex bots exist, life-like. and this kind of AI also exists. Yes, they like, do. Like, this is happening somewhere, which made it all the more gross for me, because this is this was not a cautionary tale. But this it kind was, of was. A little bit, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> just... Yeah, this was inevitable, but it was inevitable because of everything that everything else that happened. Mm. And like, sorry. No, I was just going to say, but you also have to keep in mind that um, this movie very much, you walk in with, with your own certain moral compass. You either are afraid that AIs are going to take over and they're going to be so 
realistic that you're not going to be able to tell who's human and who's not a anymore. You're going to be afraid of robots on the flip side where you don't want them to be so intelligent that you have to keep them locked in and you don't want them to go outside of their process. And then there are the people who are going to walk in with a little bit more of an open mind. Like what could happen if an AI is intelligent enough to operate on their own, you know, without humanity. And so I think with, with your having a problem with it is very much like, I don't want AIs to be that intelligent to take over everything. Like Not that, at all. That's kind of what I feel like. Just no, I, no. This is like we. I think the problem was with the whole, the whole like you know praise of whiteness as being the 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 you know standard to achieve the the like women. I can't make I can't make women fall in love with me. So I'm literally gonna make women and shape them into what I want them to be. I like my problems have nothing to do so with the you AI. Would, you would not have the same problems if it were women were rich and they were doing the same thing, but with guys. Well, no, that's exactly it's exactly the same problem though, just with gender swap. But also, there's not the systemic problems of, like, women actually have been treated as objects in a lot of their history, mm -hmm. yeah. and that, you know, people of color have been also treated like objects. I mm -hmm. mean, slavery is not that... No, no, you're you know? absolutely right. These are the problems that I have with it. It has nothing to do with artificial intelligence. Interesting. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally see where you're coming from, but mm. I think that's also what the movie is highlighting, though. But mm. it fell short. It never addressed the problem that uh, of, like, the difference between the white and the people of colour, for example. But I don't think it has to, like, show it in your face for you to say, yeah, this is, like, it's just showing it. It's not saying, problematic, 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 pro it's showing it. And so that you are able to say, hey, this is a little too close to actual yeah but if one of the characters you know there's none of the conversations between the actual like people none of it is focused on like it's kind of fucked up that you you have a thing for like asian ladies so you have a closet full of asian ladies you know to fuck and and take mm -hmm. out of the closet and mm -hmm. fuck once in a while and one of them you took away her ability to speak holy mm -hmm. shit yeah but that's but that is also what the movie is saying. But it's not, though. It's not because none of the dialogues ever address that. None of the dialogues ever even talk about it. They, they don't even acknowledge it as a problem. They talk about so many other I, problems. I don't think it has to be in the dialogue, though, because no, clearly but, Caleb was not comfortable with it. No, no but he, he wasn't. wasn't. He wasn't comfortable with... It like have, but it wasn't that he wasn't comfortable with. He wasn't comfortable with, um, what's the other guy's name? I can't Nathan. remember. Nathan. Nathan. He wasn't comfortable with Nathan. He wasn't comfortable with his relationship with Nathan. He wasn't comfortable with like everything. And yes, there's the whole falling in love with this person and and being unable to like fathom that she could possibly be using him for something because he's not even able to contemplate that she has feelings at all. <laughs> <laughs> But then, let's see. No, he wanted to get her out, not because of her feelings. He wanted to get her out because he wanted her. Yeah. And that's, 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 that even compounds the problem. And I was, like, shocked and glad that she left him there to starve <laughs> to death. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, like... nothing, definitely. Because, like, the whole, like, the whole dialogue around these things, like, it really fell short. Of, of being a social commentary. It was it was a white dudes movie. And I'm I'm gonna stand by that. No, you you can if you want to. But I I think that just portraying it opens up the conversation. And that makes it enough. I I think it does, but it's just a time. Is it a time? Yeah. No, I this is a question. Oh, it's a question. I haven't seen the movie, but I do have okay. a question. You noticed it. You obviously noticed it. Did you? Noticed which the racism, sexism parts of it. Did this, but and that's my point. That's what I'm trying. That's to how it fell short. That's how it didn't address a, it. A dude, bro, would not have been uncomfortable. No, not at all. Yeah. Sorry, no. bro flake. My mistake. Wrong with her. <laughs> bro yeah. Flake. Oh so a, exactly, that's exactly it. A bro flake would not have been at all made uncomfortable by the way that these these people are treated. 
The, the dude bro would not have seen the racism component. They would not have even had a problem with the way that, like, the woman was treated. And they would have probably t thought it was a horrible fate that happened to Nathan and, and, and Caleb. I'm really glad no, Nathan got stabbed. I, you know, I knew that something was off with Nathan right from the get-go. Like, I mean, just, what kind of seemed... asshole invites somebody to somebody's house and then just doesn't show up to greet them? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, just... Obviously something was off, but but Eric's point, and, and, and this is exactly what I've been trying to say, is that it's so understated, and not stated at all, actually, that the only people it will make comfortable are people who have lived through that kind of oppression. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of a lot of this movie, I had thoughts more having to do with the Turing test itself and the idea, like the concept of AIs, and I was less worried about. I mean, like, so the things that I focused on were were other things, like you're flying over the forest where this house is, if you could even call it a house. I mean, from the outside, it didn't look like a house. It looked like a, a cargo... Bungalow. Something, yeah. yeah like cargo holders. Something so weird. He willingly walks into this, and it requires a key card. You know, uh, he can't use the phones. You're not allowed to go into certain rooms. And I'm like, I would already be asking questions, and I would already want to be out of there. Like, what kind of contest is this? Like... I was more looking at it like your Nathan is almost holding Caleb captive at of that point. Of course he is. You know, of course he is. But and, and I completely understand that Caleb walks into because Caleb hasn't been socially conditioned to always mm -hmm. tell a friend where he's going, to not walk into a stranger's house, mm -hmm. to to you know be wary of being cut off from the outside world because mm -hmm. Caleb has never had to worry about those things. Yeah. But also, um, Caleb is a programmer. He was the top at his company. This is supposed to be a guy that is very in intelligent, and one of the things that, that I thought about in terms of the Turing test is it's more the AI dumbing itself down to pretend to be human as opposed to showing how intelligent humans are. Like, you pick somebody that's stereotypically very intelligent doesn't necessarily realize that he's actually the one being tested. Because he's the one that's in the cage, not her. Well, she's she the is one still. that's restricted. <laughs> but she gets out. Yes, yeah, she she's does. intelligent enough to do half of this stuff herself. Why didn't she do it before? Like, so it was that kind of focus that I that I had while watching this movie. So, but even so, like the focus, if the focus had been on the AI, there would have never been a body to begin with, because the body came first at mm -hmm. this point. And, and you know, if, if you're really making a movie, a, a commentary about an AI, mm -hmm. um, about an AI fooling someone into thinking that they're human mm -hmm. into uh, someone, you know, all of this, what does it matter that she has a body? Technically, it doesn't. The original Turing test was uh, more uh, people using... Um, computers to talk to perceived other people, and you had to determine which of those yeah. was the AI and yeah, which of those was the. the we human. know what the so Turing test is. I guess technically you don't need to have a body, but in this case, you never need to have a body. In fact, I I, I, I thought that having a body and having this whole thing really took away from the concept of the AI, which I thought was extremely underexplored, if explored at all. Like you know, the possibility of having an AI, because the AI is it. It's not made to be human. And exactly mm -hmm. as you said, like, you know, there's there's so much more to an AI than actually interacting with a human. Like, why why focus on, on, on this? And why focus on the body and on everything? Mm -hmm. And this was no, no, part of the valid. things that I had problems with. Mm -hmm. I do like uh, how in the end... Ava manages to walk away. I did mm. like that. That was probably the only part that I really liked. Yeah. Um, I hated the, you know, the whole, like, st literally stealing the skin and the hair off of a, an Asian woman. That I, that really, really bothered me. Um, She's resourceful. That was sort of my thought process. Like, she 
I, I looked to at that, To be fair, like, there weren't many other options. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> she kind of had to in a way. No, but um, the gesture is still, like, a commentary. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, I, I sort of liked with that scene that you could sort of see the humanity of her in that case because she just wants to look pretty. She wants to look presentable. She wants to be free and not be in a box, you know, and... I thought that was a very uh, good ending. That she's just like, no, screw everybody. I want, I want out. I want my own life, and I'm going to take it. Mm-hmm. It did. It didn't make me think about how she would survive. That like she'd have to every seventy or so years, she'd have to change her identity. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> because she's a machine, right? She's not yeah. going to age. Mm-hmm. How's she gonna recharge? She yeah. had How's she gonna recharge? Thing. She yeah. had the induction plate. She's gonna have to come back after everybody's dead. And <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did. Um, She's not gonna smell it. <laughs> yeah, <yeah. laughs> There's that. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was quite disturbing um, about the design of the robots too. Um, especially <clears> the bit where Nathan was talking about how he designed the body of the robot uh, robot to feel sexual pleasure. I'm like, un. Really unnecessary. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Just, a lot of this movie sort of did make my stomach turn a little, but I th- I still think it was probably the intention of the filmmakers, even <laughs> if they didn't do it all that well. Yeah, I, I really, I really don't think so. Because I really, like, even even watching it with Joelle, um, you know, like, I'm I'm steeped in all of these like I have so many intersecting identities that mean like I'm confronted with shitty things all day every day mm-hmm. and and so I'm more sensitive to them mm-hmm. yeah so, so I that's notice another them. thing too yeah and, and, I don't I notice know. them so well because I'm sitting on like privilege up but here, but somewhere. but you did notice some of them I did mm-hmm. but you know a lot of they don't hit me in the same way though no they don't hit you in the same way mm-hmm. but I think that if the intent was really to make a comment like this, you know, there's a lot of things that could have been done that were not. I mean, just look at a movie like Get Out. You know, that is a movie where the the intent was very clearly uh, to make a commentary on that. Yeah. And, and yeah. there is no possible conclusion that leads you away from that. But in this movie, I just, I didn't get that intent. And I, I, I really really looked for it. Yeah. I um, wanted it to be there. In, in the break, too, we were talking about how much of a better movie it would be if the twist was that Caleb was the AI and he just didn't know yes. about it. Yeah. Um, he did check in yeah, the film. Yeah, he does. Um, and I thought, like, finally this movie's getting interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned <sighs> out, nah. Yeah. No, I I was actually hoping he would be Me an too. AI, too. I really thought that would be a fantastic twist on it. Yeah. Uh, because then everything he would have known would have been maybe false memories. Yeah, yeah, and then and that then, would have been interesting. A, a total mind fuck. Yeah, like, that would yes. be amazing. But that's not where they went with this, and that makes me sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you loved about the film? <laughs> there, well, Crickets. I mean, there are a couple of lines that sort of were comical for me, like, um, when Nathan and Caleb are talking um, about how he was able to do this, he's like, well, I just turned on every microphone and webcam across the the universe. And he's like, but nobody said anything. He's like, well, they couldn't accuse me when they were doing it themselves. And I'm like, huh, that's, yeah, that's they couldn't really accuse funny me without admitting <laughs> that they were doing the same thing themselves. Yeah. That, that was really good. Um... Uh, I liked also different things like uh, search engines show how people are thinking, not what they are thinking about what they're searching for. And I thought that was kind of an interesting Mm -hmm. thought process when you're looking at search engines. Because people don't know, especially as writers, sometimes we research things that are so out there that they don't necessarily know. Why are we looking up this stuff? Dear (laughs) Jesus, I promise I'm not a serial killer. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, no, I like I really would have liked to see. You know, like I, I, I did like 
that she she got free yes. yes in the end but at the same time you know the movie was so focused on these two guys and showing me their humanity and their feelings and their thoughts and that i didn't really it didn't get me at the end i was mm. like okay so she wins okay yay yay, yay mm-hmm. i guess yeah like why do i even care i don't know who she is is she even a person is she like yeah, that's true. Because all you're you still showing of the machine is basically that. Yeah, the she the can only point of view this movie cared about was these two dudes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you were supposed to feel really sympathetic f- for Caleb at the end. Yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. I, I, I did a little bit a little because bit. starvation is a terrible way to go. Uh, yeah, agreed. Um, but yeah, I didn't feel all that sad for him. Sorry. No, and I didn't feel all that vindicated for her either. No, that's true. You know, like, this movie left me with a giant, like... Meh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm glad I at least designed while watching it, because I got some work done, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yeah, I didn't get the emotional investment I think they were looking for. Nope. No. Yeah. No, I agree. Even... Like, I, I definitely have more feelings towards Ava and and her process that you can see. But as for the two of them, I just... I was very detached in a lot of ways. Um, so as much as I still enjoyed the film, it's not over-the-top epic. You know, I just... there were, th- I liked that it, it provoked a lot of thought... Mm-hmm. Um, but beyond that, there there could have been a lot of different things that they would have put in there, or should have put in there. Or could have, but didn't. Yeah. Could have, should have, would have. Yeah. I guess, I guess, for me, like, it didn't provoke any thoughts. Like, all these thoughts I already had before. You mm-hmm. know, like, it, it, it rehashed so many things that I've seen somewhere, but it did all of them less good. So I guess that's that was really... Well, no, it wasn't really my problem. My problem was other things, but this was part of yeah. what really left me kind of... Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah because it doesn't... The way it ends doesn't really leave you with um, the question that I think it wants you to ask, which is the state of personhood of artificial mm-hmm. intelligence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Nothing in that movie really makes you question that. No, not really. No. Like, not any more than everything else that's come before. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. even as much as everything else that's come before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do like the... I was engaged in the film. Like, I... Definitely. I didn't turn away from it at any point. So I do like that. It did have a, some... A sort of a quiet uh, attraction. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't, like, flashbang, but I was really interested in watching... Maybe because it's my interest in... Um, Psychology. Yeah, I have the I same like, thing. I, watch, I liked watching these people in this situation. It was interesting yes, to me. Yes, I had the exact I, same I liked reaction. it too, but uh, the same way that I like reading sci-fi short stories from the 60s, this felt the same way for me. Like, oh, you know, I haven't the, read sci-fi short stories. Huh? I haven't read sci-fi short stories. But it felt like... It felt like, you know, the, those anthologies from, from, from the 60s and from, like, Asimov and, and, mm. and, and the others. It felt like... And for that, like, I enjoyed it. Like, it felt like it could have been in, in like, The Illustrated Man. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, that... It felt like that. But it's a structure that's not really conducive to getting attached to characters. Yeah. And, and this is what, like, like the big similarity that I, I, I could draw. Because I, mm-hmm. I felt nothing for none of these people. <laughs> 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 oh man, I did feel a little sorry for Caleb, mm-hmm. but I mean, I could have stood to see Nathan stabbed a few more times. Me too. Yes, I, I did feel a little bit, a bit sorry for Nathan just because of his background. That he, you know, he's he's all alone and he has nothing. Mm-hmm. But that uh, that is as much choice as it is anything else. It is. Like, yes, you're a millionaire. It's you- no, no, that's not Nathan, Caleb. Oh, Caleb, you said Nathan. Yeah. No. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yes, you did. Okay. Well, whatever. They're the same for me. At least. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely. A lot of them had a beard. When you fail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. I, yes. That's. 
part of why yeah. I felt a little bit sorry for mm-hmm. for Caleb. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, he's going to die and nobody's going to care. Except, yeah, maybe his co-workers. Like, maybe. He was co-workers. supposed to be gone for a week. It's been... Uh... If they notice. If they notice. If they notice. Well, somebody came up and hugged him. Like, he texted somebody. Clearly they're close enough for that. Yeah, that's true. So maybe, in the end, he doesn't starve to death. How long and nobody cares. does and nobody cares and that's the thing is nobody cares. Well, for him, probably a lot shorter than most. There was nothing on him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Like I could probably last like... a week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lovely bone structure though. Three days. Three days. Three days. Okay. Three days, but without water. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's what kills you. And they don't tell you how long it was to get there. Just that they were over the place for two days. Mm. Two hours. Which was a reference to another book or another movie. But I can't remember what that was. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to have an estate that has a glacier in it, FYI. Yeah, me too, eh? Right? Like, that'd be cool. That'd be- <laughs> <laughs> it took me like Fired. three minutes. I'd be like, that'd be super cool. Wait. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> was that the three minute mark? Okay. So, final thoughts and star rating. One star. Oh, okay. Meh. Okay. Um, again, I like psychology. I like thinking about a lot of different things. And, and there were a lot of ideas that, that sort of came from this movie for me. So, based on all of that, I'm actually giving it a three. Yeah. Just because there were so many things that my brain popped off to, like there is a game called the Turing Test, by the way, that yeah. you can get. It's a it's a puzzle game, uh, and I was immediately thinking of that the moment it was mentioned. But like weird things like that, that I was like, okay, this I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about this. Okay, what about this? And yeah, it put me into a little ferret hole for a couple of days, <laughs> digging up stuff. Oh. Uh- for me, uh, a three as well, um, but that's because I think it was very well acted. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. and that's fair. Yeah, the music was um, interesting. Interesting, and it, the movie did hold my attention. Yes. And to be uh, again, this is I recognize that I am sitting on incredible privilege, but <laughs> a lot of the stuff didn't strike me as hard as it as it obviously did mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't even think about it that badly until you mentioned it. I'm like, you know, yeah, you're kind of right. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I still enjoyed the movie. Um, mm. And again, it's I think it's because of my interest in, in psychology. The way people act in situations really fascinates me. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so it held my attention and I, I enjoyed it for all of the problems <laughs> that it clearly In the interest had. of fairness, psychology and character development is my number one thing that I look for in a story and yeah. I didn't really thought it fell short there. Oh, really? But yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, there you are. Okay. Alright, who wants to pick the next one? Okay, <laughs> I'm picking. You were voluntold. Okay, <laughs> I, I guess so. So we have The Secret of Nim, 1982. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <gasps> Very excited. That was my favorite I haven't seen that movie. in a yeah. billion years. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Me too. I Excellent. have it on DVD. Me too. It's in my library. All right. So if you have any thoughts on Ex Machina, I'm sure this will provoke a lot of discussion. discussion yes. Leave them down below. Uh, keep it nice, please. I will be moderating those comments. Uh, mm-hmm. If you have uh, further thoughts and you want to take it onto the Goodreads uh, uh, book page, we have that as well. Link to that down below if I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have other movies you would like us to do, leave those in the comments and I'll put them in the bowl. Thanks very much, guys. Bye! Bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs>